Hey guys, hey, good evening, good evening, good evening. How are you? Where are you? Just put it in the chat so I know who, who joined us and who saw this video. As you might see, I am really, really excited today because I have a very special guest with me. Her name is Michelle Ramsey, and she is going to be um, talking to us today about poetry. As you may know, she is going to be on, uh, uh, at the upcoming tea party as a very special poet who will not only do her work, but some other work from famous um, poets. Welcome, Michelle. Welcome to Tea Talk. Thank you, Ev. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay, welcome. Um, thank you. It's a pleasure for me to have you. Can I tell you how pretty you look, girl? I thank you. I thank you. <laughs> thank you. You look like a queen today. Uh. <laughs> All right. So, Michelle, uh, I know you've been busy, but you decided to come over here to talk to me so that our um, our tea lovers and the people who will be at the tea party can get a chance to see you and hear who is right. Michelle. Um, first of all, tell me where you're from. You sound like you have a beautiful accent. So I proudly hail from St. Mary, Jamaica, the beautiful, beautiful, cool parish of St. Mary in Jamaica. Okay, okay, we got that. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Uh, Michelle, um, what do you do um, beside poetry? Well, do you mean in general or do you mean as a profession? profession. Uh, yeah. As a profession. Well, right now I am, I work in corporate. I serve as um, a part of the administrative support staff for a, uh, a plumbing company. That's what I do now. And alongside mm -hmm. that, I do my tutoring with, uh, with, with, with other kids, with mm -hmm. my own dual minds that I am the owner and director of. Okay, so you are your, 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 you're your own CEO, your CEO of your own business. Yes, I am. And you're working in the education space. Lovely. Yes. Uh, I, I wish you good luck with that. I thank you. Okay, so you your background obviously was um, Jamaica. You grew up there. Um, what age did you come over here to, to the United States? Uh, when I came over here, I was twenty eight. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. Yes. That's a good. That's a good age to come here. <laughs> <laughs> you already get grown up in Jamaica. All right. I have my roots firmly planted in Jamaica. Okay, wonderful. So at what point did you become interested in, in poetry, Michelle? Well, uh, my passion for poetry has been since I was in elementary school. Back home, we call it all age school. So it has been since I, ca I can remember ever since I was about, I'm going to say four years old or so, I recall our teacher would have taken us outside because, of course, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, we have the tropical climate, so we could have gone outside at any time. And so we would go and we would sit under trees and we would, you know, just like absorb nature while we were uh, basking in poetry. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I just had developed a love for poetry and it just never left it never left and i am happy that i am regaining my passion for it okay so were you um originally uh, just a lover of reciting poems or were you writing from the very beginning well i we had to <laughs> in, in 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 our era Mm -hmm. uh, as from as young as we were, I can recall when we were in grade five, our teacher would have made it mandatory for us to do the, the analysis part of the poetry. And for that reason, she would also ask us to write, not just requesting it as a part of the curriculum, 
but she she inspired us because the way she would have gone through the the, the poem and every detail in that poem it did inspire a lot of us as kids to start writing a poem then you know we did a lot of compositions back then so it it, it allowed us to build on those skills and to to get into it and you know for those who didn't have the love uh, they were enforced but for those who had the love and the and had that mind for the poem then you know we were inspired and motivated and encouraged to write if it if it, if it was only four lines that would have been enough oh it was it was at a tender age okay wonderful yeah i, I kind of grew up in that era of right to study you know memorize poems and yes. and know what they meant you know the inter the interpretation of of the, the the lines correct yes that was a regular thing just like penmanship was poetry was a regular thing for us right and and boy don't we appreciate that now i do yeah we do we really do okay so um you 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 grew up in the, when you were in college and university um in jamaica did you did you um do poetry so when I was in college back home, when I did, uh, when I was at teachers college, mm -hmm. we did more, more of the just, just uh, let's say, furthering our knowledge in terms of the, the literary elements and those aspects of uh, poetry and uh, based on the aspect of the curriculum at the time, for me, I, I skimmed on that only because, you know, that was not my major. So for those who majored like in the linguistics area, I'm sure they did that, but I didn't, I didn't embark on it that much. And at that time, I, I still had my love for poetry, but let's just say I did not, I didn't do as much writing uh, when it comes on to poetry. And at that time, my extracurricular activities took me more into the dancing realm. Oh. Uh, but in, <laughs> in, in university, after uh, teacher's college, I started, you know, again, doing a little bit of writing here and there and a little bit of recitation. But then when I came to the university here, I had taken a class in creative writing and we were, at the time, we, we, we were forced, kind of, let, let me say coerced, <laughs> kind of, we, we, it, it was not optional. So in class, we had to do like free verses, like the different genres of poetry. We were challenged and some of them, we had to do right on the spot. So then sometimes we had to do it individually, sometimes as a group. And because of that, it really, it really plunged into your creativity and it really got into, do you have it or don't you kind of a thing. And so it was then that my passion heightened once again. And after that, I'm like, okay, I guess I really do have it based on feedback from the professor and the other students. And yeah, from there on, I really got with it again. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, you're joining us on Tea Talks. This is Esma Lily Tea Talk. My name is Evadne and my special guest is Michelle Ramsey, who is telling us about her her poetic journey from Jamaica to the United States. And she's going to be one of the awesome, awesome guests at our upcoming tea party, the virtual tea party. Um, and we're so looking forward to hearing her um, recite for us. You might have seen some videos going around with her doing some poetry. Um, I hope she can do a little something for us this evening. I didn't ask before, but with me right so michelle is telling us about her life you know how she she got into poetry or poetry got into her because it seemed to Correct. me that at some point she kind of 
left it behind for dancing because she's a rhythmic person. Uh, but it, it found her again. And I, I never stopped um, asking her to do poetry for me <laughs> since I know that she was so much a great poet. Okay, so Michelle, where do you see yourself going with this poetry? Well, you know what they say, they say your passion and your purpose usually finds you. And so I feel as though it is time for me to reignite this passion so it can blossom into being more purposeful. And that is why I never hesitate when somebody says to me on spur of the moment, can you do a piece? Can you write? I, I really do prefer to write my poems than to recite, even though I, I have some great poets that I admire, like Langston Hughes as a Caribbean poet. I really admire him. Maya Angelou, of course, she's my favorite because she does a lot of pastoral poetry to inspire us. And so for me, I really want to write more because I started an anthology and because of, because of digital uh, compromise, I lost my anthology about 10 years ago and I, was very, I felt very hurt, but I just think it's time to start afresh and add more and to continue with it. And so... It gives me pleasure, just like, you know, as it did in, in church too, growing up as a kid, when we had to perform for like harvest and rally and stuff like that, you know, it gives me pleasure then and it still gives me pleasure now. Nice, nice, nice. So um, we're looking forward to that book. I, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> um. <laughs> I know you'll keep, I know, I know, I, know. I can count on you, Ev. And know. you know, you know I'll just make a word. big announcement that Michelle has a book coming out by the end of the year. And so... <laughs> no pressure, right? No pressure. No pressure. So, <laughs> she will have to start writing the chapters of that. Uh, so, it, it's a beautiful thing, and I think you should really get your work um, published. Um it's easier than you think because sometimes when it comes on to publishing work, we think about doing the whole book at one go. Right. No. It's no. not like that anymore. They, they, anymore. Yes. People just yes. make an announcement so that they, they're doing a book, they publish the cover and they start to market their book and then they write it as they go along to meet that deadline that they set. Correct. Correct. And it is a really great strategy. It forces you because you make the, the announcement so you have to follow through with it. And execute and, the plan, yes. Yeah, and you also get to feel what the public is feeling about right. your work and and you can get new inspiration um, to to um, to write. Yes, you, you might agree. take the writing in a whole different direction by the time you're finished. So I think you should uh, use that strategy and just go ahead. Let's plan the party from now. For sounds like a plan. <laughs> sounds like a plan for December. <laughs> December, no pressure. <laughs> and and the other thing that most people are doing too is they are having co-authors. So you have somebody else do a part of it, a chapter or something. Right. Yeah it's better you start there because once you do one piece of work you will continue to it do it lends itself yes and it doesn't mean you have to put all of your thing out there in one book piece at a time piece at a time so i yeah. thank you for the encouragement because yes yeah, sometimes welcome. sometimes yeah we do look at the journey <laughs> you know to get there rather than looking at the destination and yeah. how yes just how beautiful it would be when we actually get there and mm -hmm. we think about the journey and sometimes you know we place these inhibitions just because we look at the the time the time yeah. the time and for me poetry it, it it does take it does take that that mood to get into yeah i, I can get up and i can write an essay at any time i can write you know different types of i can do different 
you know, types of writing at any time. But for the poem, I like to be in that kind of place where, you know, I go through a little meditation first in whatever I'm writing about. I reflect and, you know, research and stuff like that to, you know, to get that inspiration. Sometimes I revert to the same trees that <laughs> my teachers <laughs> took me to back then and it it, it, it that space that mind frame yes yes yeah yes it does it does provide inspiration so so i i would say honey just do your thing and if you don't think that you you if if you think it's going to take you too long like i said co-author find a few people that you know can write well and say hey guys i need a chapter from you or three or four poems you know and and publish it publish it that's a that's a thought i actually i actually thought of getting kids as my co-authors because again you know that's where my passion lies Mm -hmm. and i'm trying to get my kids i have my eldest he is known for poetry as well Mm -hmm. The younger two, they don't have that much of an appreciation for it, and so, you know, I'm trying to get them to think of it in, in in a different light. Right, right. So there you have it. You have your daughter, and get a couple other people, and do your thing. Maybe one day you'll do it's one by yourself and whatever. But the most important thing is to start and to publish. Yes. Once you do it one time, you 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 you'll just go because you start to get so much feedback and inspiration that you will you will do it you know on you will continue just get correct. it up correct correct yes. all right so she's going to give us a book people she is going to give us a book <laughs> yes. very hold soon me hold me to it ev <laughs> hold me to it well you know i will and we can throw that big party for that book but we want to see it out there. I love to see the ladies progress and I like to see um, them, you know, owning their destiny because we have it in us, but you know, especially those of us who are from Jamaica, we like to downplay our, our, our talents. Right, not, not, a, not anymore because we live in a world where visibility means yeah. so and visibility matters so much. And I know, yes, we're from the kind of culture where if we talk about ourselves in in in, in a promoting way people misinterpret it for being like show off and yeah. stuff like that but it's one of the things that i try to encourage my kids the, the ones i have taught the ones i teach and uh, my biological kids any any of them that i come in contact with celebrate yourself you are, you are worth celebrating every Every effort is worth celebrating. Yes, it's because of our culture. It is so hard to to yes. to to um to separate yourself from that that thing that you grew up with. To to be meek and gentle and hide who you are and your success right. and your everything. Because to do otherwise is to show off, and you know people would resent you for that and all that. And it's the very thing that would make you wealthy. Yes. So we, we have to really work hard to get past that because that's a cultural block there for yes. most of us yes. who grew up, especially in Jamaica. I don't know if other people in the Caribbean are, are totally like that, but Jamaicans for some sure. Some of them, yes, some of them are like that based on those who I have come in contact with. Yeah. It's, it's the same kind of socialization and we have to get away from and, that and and we have so many talents and hide them because you still have that mindset right as soon as people see you putting your head out there doing something they're like cha you too enough you know and and that shuts up yes shuts, you know people up and they don't express themselves so girl we're not in that space anymore we're past that we lift up each know, other and yes we know, shine the light for each other and shine the light on each other I yeah, agree. We know what and I have to needed. commend you for that, Ed. Thank you. We know what is needed to push ourselves a little further because the other persons who are out there, it's not like they're better. It's not like they, they're brighter. It's, it's not strategy. like anything. It's just culture that yes. keeps us so contained. Yes. And it's, it's a pity. We have to work very hard to get past 
that part of our culture to stay low profile, stay in the background. Mm -hmm. Everybody is, oh, I'll work, what I said, from behind the scenes, <laughs> or I'll work in the background. And I keep telling people, especially ladies, behind the scenes is full <laughs> the background is full there ain't no come more to the front, front you have to come, come to the to front the get the limelight you have to find our voices and come to the front step out step around come around come around show your face so michelle i'm so happy that you know this relationship um as you said it, it's, it's going to be a little bit of pressure from me always but <laughs> i i always believe in your abilities and i always try to push you somewhat and i and appreciate that because we do need that it doesn't matter how broad our backs are i think we all can do with that extra buffering right. and i appreciate that and it comes from a place of, of authentic and, and authenticity Thank you. And I, I would do anything to see people of talent go further and do more. And so if, if it is only to promote through my my network, my social media network, I, I, if, if it's only that I can do to help somebody else to move forward, I continue to do that and I will always do it. Awesome. Because you know, it's it's a little bravery for me to come out in front of camera to do all these things. but um so for some people it's much much worse they would never do it right so <laughs> if you can help to bring them along then why not so michelle the big question do you have anything planned to say for us today that we can and, oh, well. and not tonight i could give i could give you something like a teaser but then there is a teaser enough on your page ev so why don't mm -hmm. i reserve what i have and let the people purchase their tickets and come to get more of that on Sunday. Do you have access to any Louis Ben poems that you could read now? Or no, you know, right I would have to. Yes, I would have to move. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't want to move. I would have to move. I would okay. have to. Move. And um, they'll get it. I, I will, I will, I will give you a pass on that one because I didn't, I didn't tell you that I was going to ask um, for one. Um, yeah, but for those of you who haven't seen Michelle's um, work, there are some videos on this page and on my personal Facebook page with Michelle, some YouTube videos um, with her reciting and it's very, very good. I could also post it below this post in the comments so that you could see her in action and see what she can do and her rhythm and all of that. <laughs> All right, Michelle, um, thank you so much for being here for, for this, this nice, simple, relaxing chat. And um, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday and all that you have to offer. It's been my pleasure and I look forward to the others joining us for tea for the virtual session on Sunday where we will have more and more artists to, you know, just get that vibe on right i was talking with david earlier today and he's he's um all ready to go did you see the portrait that he did and no i oh yes i caught a glimpse of it a quick glimpse of it because uh -huh. um yes i was tagged but i did not get to take in all the details yeah amazing work yes, short yes i saw that that acrylic yes i saw that yeah and and, and david is here in new york correct David is here in Queens. Okay, in Queens too. New York, okay. yes. Okay, okay, yeah. great, great. And he awesome. said he has over, over 500 pieces of work at his home. And wow. he also sells um, copies of some of them. He has the prints, okay. um, so you could get it um, framed or you could take it and frame it, you know. Yeah, right. so okay. definitely get to know them and um, they're right over there. So you could link up with them yes yes i would okay. like to see some more of his work yes I, I i i like i like it i like the you know i like the visual art i like yeah, <laughs> like all kinds of art yes. yes performing arts and visual art okay wonderful so run on to your family girl it's such a blessing to have you and to have you um coming on sunday to do your thing as we continue to um, celebrate 
the entrepreneurs and you are one of those so am i and we have to keep hold each other up correct right? right. yes so okay. it's my pleasure being here again thank you you're welcome have a good night All right, bye guys you. bye leave us a comment I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then swarm around me a hive of honeybees. I say, it's in the fire of my eyes and the flash of my teeth. The swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride in my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me.